Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's head-to-head -head comparison, we're going to take a look at the original Acura NSX and stack it up against the 2022 Chevrolet Corvette C8. Now why am I comparing both of these vehicles when they're not even remotely close in their ages? We have the modern day C8 and the original NSX back from 1990 when it was first launched. Well, the Acura NSX was a mid-engine sports car that you could daily drive, it was relatively affordable, and it was something that was also practical as well. We have that same design in the Corvette C8, even though these are different manufacturers, they both have a classic supercar-like design, they're daily drivable, they're very, very practical in order to place a lot of items, which you'll see later in this video. They're also very quick, relatively speaking, for their ages. And they just have that supercar-like design with that affordability, which is awesome to see. I'm also going to touch briefly on the second generation for the Acura NSX, which first debuted in 2015, and they still make that today for a 2022 year model. So let's get into looking at these mid-engine sports cars. We're going to start off with this 1996 Acura NSX. Like I mentioned, this is a mid-engine vehicle. It has a three liter VTEC V6 engine paired to a four-speed automatic or a five-speed manual, pumping out 252 horsepower or 270 for the manual with 210 pound-feet of torque. That power sent to the rear wheels, it weighs in right around 3,100 pounds It'll do zero to 60 in just over six seconds. Its top speed is 168 miles an hour. And with a fuel capacity of 18.4, the fuel economy was around 18 miles per gallon in the city and 24 out on the highway. Now over on the all new C8, this is mid-engine as well with a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 paired to an eight speed automatic only. There is no manual transmission available and it produces 495 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque Rear wheel drive, just like the original NSX, weighs in around 3,300 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in under three seconds with a top speed of 194 and the same fuel capacity at 18 and a half gallons with a fuel economy of 19 miles per gallon in the city and 27 out on the highway. And then just touching briefly on the second generation Acura NSX, my brother was able to check this out. So if you wanna see that full review, that's down in the description. But this has a three and a half liter twin turbo V6 Paired to the electric hybrid system, it pumps out 573 horsepower, 476 pound-feet of torque. It's only paired to a nine-speed automatic. This is all-wheel drive as well. Zero to 60 is under three seconds with a top speed of 191. So let's move on now to the exterior styling for this 1996, where this has some of the old school technology like the pop-up headlights. You do not see that on modern cars today. It just housed the headlights and the high beams. The turn signals were in the lower section and it had a very simple and functional design. Plenty of cutouts in that bumper to provide a lot of cooling to all the components up front. However, as you can tell, there's the spare tire and then some other components for the engine that are nicely placed up front. So no storage space up front, which you'll see over on the C8, but it has a really clean looking front end design, especially for a 1996, still looks like a modern car in some aspects. Over on the all new C8, obviously a different manufacturer, much more modern obviously being a 2022. You can tell that there's vents in the lower section to ride cooling to those front radiators, as well as having cameras. This even has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals. Really nice sleek housing, so you can get a feel for how much technology has changed between both of these models. Really nice lines coming down the hood as well. Even some contrast right in that middle just to break up this unique color. And there's even a front split or two to provide a better aerodynamics and downforce. And then up front, there is no spare tire. This does have some functional trunk space where you can place items. So the C8s do not have a spare tire. Really cool again to see that the original NSX offered you a spare tire, especially for the size and what it was designed for. Now on the second generation for the NSX, you can tell this has a much more modern design, so I just wanna throw that in. Has LED headlights, a lot of cutouts in the lower section, provide cooling to all the components that are located up front. And with the new NSX, it does not have any storage space up front. So it's just like the original NSX, minus the fact that there is no spare tire anymore, but it still retains all of those components up front, being a hybrid electric system. It needs somewhere for all those items to go. So even with the second generation NSX, it's not quite as practical as the C8. Having that extra room up front really makes a huge difference, especially for the size. So making our way to the side profile now for the original NSX, it has a very, very clean design to it. I love all the lines. Everything is very sleek. 
It has functional air inlets just in front of the back tires to help provide even more cooling to the engine, as well as having a great set of aftermarket wheels for this particular model. They match very nicely and from different angles. The original NSX looks like a Ferrari. I think that was what Acura and Honda was going for when they designed the NSX. Now over on the C8 Corvette, all of the lines are much more crisp. We still have that air inlet on the back of the door to provide cooling to the mid-engine, which a lot of mid-engine vehicles have some type of cooling duct right there. This has a great set of wheels on it. Obviously for the 2022 year model, you can pick from a lot of wheels and you have a lot of aftermarket options. This even has integrated cameras, which is new technology, obviously. There's even turn signals on the end of the mirrors as well. And then looking at the side profile for the second gen NSX, a lot more crisp lines than the original, flow very nicely as well. There's some indentions in the front quarter panel just behind the front tires. This even has those functional air inlets just behind the doors to provide cooling to that mid-engine design. This has a really nice set of wheels, massive brake calipers finished off in red, a great contrast against this white. And I love the line that goes right through the gas cap all the way to the spoiler. Gives it a really cool modern look for this NSX. And then making our way to the rear end for the original NSX, it is just super clean. I'm a big fan of very simple vehicles that are fun to drive, very functional at the same time too. And this original NSX, is no different. This is so sleek for the rear end. We have a functional integrated spoiler as well, which just ties in nicely, especially with the taillight design. Very simple with the dual exhaust in the lower section, as well as mesh right in the middle for heat extraction from the engine to provide even more cooling. It has a great stylish rear end to it, even in this modern era. And over on the C8, the rear end design is very nice. We have the fixed wing. You did have a few different wing options for this C8. Classic Stingray logo up top, LED taillights obviously, a little bit more contoured lines, especially in the taillights. There's even heat extraction vents on both sides and a backup camera. The original NSX did not have a backup camera, so you were on your own with backing up, no parking sensors, no aids, anything like that. And then obviously for this diffuser, much more aggressive with that quad tip exhaust as well. And to touch briefly on the second gen NSX, the rear end is very, very similar to the CA Corvette with that trunk lip spoiler, backup camera sensors, all of the vents, even the carbon fiber diffuser. So a lot more integration and upgrades compared to the original model. And then for the rear, even being a mid-engine vehicle, the NSX had enough room to place the roof in the back. This model here is the NSX-T, and the T stands for Targa, so you could remove the roof and even place it in the trunk. Same with the C8 Corvette. This has a lot of space. Chevrolet wanted to promote this and being able to fit two golf bags in the back, which you can do, as well as fitting the roof. So just like the NSX, with that mid-engine design, very cool to see. And then the second gen NSX is the only model in today's video that is a true coupe. So the roof is not removable, but it still retains a good amount of storage space behind that engine. And then moving on to the interior now for this original NSX, this model had a very classic design with the exterior red, the beige interior. For the age of it, it's actually held up pretty well for all this leather, but gives it a great look. And we have a similar design for the C8. So it's very cool that we had a similar interior color. Exterior color is obviously different. On the NSX, this had an analog gauge cluster and that was it. That is all that you really truly need. So you're not going through all that different information. You have your tack, you have your speedometer, all of your engine vitals as well even the turn key, which obviously push button was not integrated back in the 90s. And then obviously with the newer technology today, the Corvette C8 has a digital gauge cluster with a lot of information that you can go through. Yes, it is a lot more helpful in today's world, but I do like the simplicity of the original NSX. And the second generation NSX also has a digital gauge cluster with all the information that you can toggle through. Right in the center though, for this NSX, we have very few buttons. We have the radio controls, the cassette player, your AC, volume controls, that is pretty much it. All of the basics to actually daily drive this vehicle so you could take it out and still be comfortable in driving it. For the C8 Corvette as well as the second generation NSX, digital screen right in the middle, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all of that wireless technology that of course was not integrated into 90s models. 
You'll see more of that on the NSX as well. In the center console for the original NSX, there was pretty much no room for a two-seater mid-engine vehicle though. You could place maybe some drinks there if you wanted to. Smaller items like the key fob or your phone. Back in the 90s though, I don't think a phone would have fit there but it's nice to have that storage along with the glove box as well. And then over on the C8 Corvette, a little bit more storage, some more technologies like the auxiliaries where you could charge electronics, wireless charging like I mentioned earlier with that technology. So a little bit more storage right in the middle and then obviously with the glove box there was a lot more space. <laughs> behind the wheel of the original Acura NSX. My brother actually got to drive the newest version for the NSX a few years back. So I will have that video down in the description below. So that way you can see the difference between the original and the modern twist that Acura decided to make when they brought back the NSX. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a long test drive for today's video. So I'm going to try to go over as much as I can in the short amount of miles that I can put on this today but so far this is pretty cool. And I hope the camera's not shaking too much for you guys. It is a bumpy ride, but I love it. That's what this car is for. This is a sports car that I think you could actually still daily drive with the amount of storage space that you have. But I could see this being a daily driver. I really could. It has old school tech in it. So you are pretty much driving this car. And for the true car enthusiast, we don't want all of those bells and whistles. We want something we can hop into and just go for a nice drive and enjoy our drive from point A to point B. Now I will say it would be even cooler if I was in the five speed manual. It's nowhere near fast, but it's a quick car, even for a 1996. This is still, this is still adequate. Well, we're going to give it an, a, a small acceleration. Really listen to that exhaust again. So here we go. Not really loud. It definitely sounds good though in person. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Here we go. Four seconds is what it, it wow. got there. Not that bad, a little squealing on the tire. Uh, this does have uh, winter tires on it right now, so unfortunately no yeah. summer tires, but wow. 3.4, not too bad. <laughs> quicker than my car you know I, yeah I kind of go back a little bit on what I said it, it's it's not not a fast car it, it's a quick car yeah and now that we can actually redline it because before you know we were short shifting on brand new cars yeah so it'll not it'll bad. put you in the seat and so we're going to give it a quick acceleration here in the C8 from second gear Definitely a quick vehicle, a lot of fun to drive. The paddles are super responsive. I do wish that a manual option was available, but it's very, very quick. It sounds great too. A manual would be cool like the original NSX. Even the second generation NSX, the manual is no longer. So unfortunately, <laughs> This sounds good. Unfortunately, the manual is dying. But nonetheless, this is still a fun car to drive. We'll give it one last acceleration. And then coming back to final thoughts between the original NSX, the Chevrolet Corvette C8, as well as touching briefly on the second generation for the NSX. 
All three of these are mid-engine vehicles that have affordability to them, practicality to them, reliability to them as well, and something that you can daily drive. I love mid-engine vehicles. I've owned three of them personally from a Lotus and two R8s as well, and I love the platform. I love how practical these mid-engine vehicles are becoming, even for the original NSX. When I got to drive this, I could definitely see driving around that 96 every single day with the amount of storage that it has. Now, I will say the interior lacked a little bit of storage space, but you had all that room behind the engine, no room up front, however, but you still could daily drive this if you wanted to today. And it's also crazy to see the fact that the 1996 Acura NSX, depending on its mileage, can be the same price as a 2022 Chevrolet Corvette C8. So I actually found out that the owner of this NSX traded it in for a Corvette C8. So that got me thinking, why would somebody trade in their NSX for a Corvette? Well, you can get a modern vehicle, very, very similar to the NSX, but for a similar price, you can upgrade to all the bells and whistles, all the technology, if that's something that you're interested in. So it's crazy to see that back in the 90s, the NSX was right around 60 to $80,000. In today's market, it's pretty much the same, 60 to $80,000. If you have some lower mileage NSXs, they're probably going to be closer to the six figure mark. But for the Chevrolet Corvette C8, it's right around there, 60 to $80,000. In today's market, it, they're probably creeping up to around 100 grand, just depending on the model that you go with. In today's model, we had the 2LT. So there's a 1LT, a 2LT, and a 3LT. So it just depends on the trim level that you go with. And then the second generation NSX is well over six figures. So that's a little bit higher. Being that hybrid technology, it's going to cost a little bit more. But I think it's awesome to see how the original NSX has kind of set the bar for mid-engine vehicles today. We have a lot to choose from. The R8, like I just mentioned, we have the C8, the NSX, Ferraris, you can get Lamborghinis as well, all the way up to a lot of Ferraris, all the hyper cars as well. Depending on your budget, obviously, and what you're willing to drive and how much you wanna drive your car, there are a lot of different options. But I hope that was a good video for you guys today. I thought it was pretty cool being able to drive the original NSX. One of the dream cars for me, I don't think I would actually buy one, but it is definitely awesome. I wish I could drive the manual and that would probably change my perspective just a little bit more. But it's awesome to see that the seat is a very cool modern kind of version if you want to call it that obviously we have the second generation nsx as well but a huge price difference so if you want to stay under the hundred thousand dollar mark you have a lot of different mid-engine options if you enjoyed today's video give it a huge thumbs up comment down below which mid-engine vehicle would you daily drive let me know i daily drive my r8 and drive it as much as i can a perfect car for my needs but give this video a huge thumbs up consider smashing that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on our daily uploads. I'll see you all in the next video.